<laughs> Why have a face? <laughs> My God, how could we live without a face? <laughs> we wouldn't know who we were, one from another. We wouldn't be able to know people's age as readily. Uh, you would lose age, you'd lose identity. Uh, it's a site for sexual signals, uh, for our feelings, our emotions. We would survive without faces. For most people, the face is really uh, their sense of identity. Uh, it's who you are, what marks you as. How you tell one person from another. It's probably the most personal or one of the most personal parts and representations uh, that we have. And not just because of the senses, although clearly if you taste and smell and eat and breathe, I mean, that's an awfully important part of yourself. But, uh, you know, behind the face is the brain. Uh, and the face, of course, is the display system, the primary one for emotions. But in my first wave of studies, the first series, I just worked with people in literate cultures. South America, Japan, uh, Europe, and North uh, America as well. But the problem was, you could always say, everybody had learned these expressions from the tube or the magazine. Maybe it was John Wayne and Charlie Chaplin, not our evolution that was responsible. So to answer that, I went in 1967, 20 years ago, to a preliterate culture in New Guinea, a group that had not had any contact at that time with the media. The first thing we did was to show them pictures and ask them to make up a story. What happened? Why is this person showing his face? And we analyzed those, and that's how we got, for example, that the best, most common story for a fear face was a wild pig is after you and you have no weapon. The best story for a sad face, the one that came up most often, was that your child had died.